This is gonna be. I'm in a t-shirt. This is, we're gonna be relaxed. <laughs> we're gonna be relaxed today. Uh, so my name is Travis Grenier. I am the video marketing director here at Alliance Group, and I have with me today Dave Wolf. Dave, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, today we're gonna go over what you need to know before you die. And I was the perfect person to host this because I have no idea uh, <laughs> what what, uh, what estate planning is, what wills and trusts are, and you know all of this stuff. Um, you know, I work in the industry, but I, I, I do video. I'm a video guy first and foremost. Um, but uh, you know, I have life insurance, um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the planning that I've done. Um, I am 29 years old. Uh, I am married. I have a kid on the way, um, and it's I've just now gotten to the point in my life where I need to start thinking about this kind of stuff. So I appreciate you coming on today and I'm going to pick your brain. I guess I, I just want to know where to start. Um, you know, if something were to happen to me today, I'm, I know that I'm underprepared. I know that I have life insurance and my wife's going to get that. As far as my other, you know, debts and everything, things that are not in our names, there's so many that I don't know. I don't even know what questions to ask. Sure. I guess, that's my first question to you is where would somebody like me start? Uh, it, it, and, and it's funny. It, I've done this for 30 years and it's still a question. When you ask it, I go, hmm, where would I tell somebody in a younger age? Because uh, what, where to start? You know, well, and I think yesterday I said, um, no matter if you start or you don't, it's still the same scenario. Um, I'll use an analogy that there are folks that will ask. Uh, they'll say, um, it and we'll talk, we talk about another subject uh, we, they'll say, well, what, what would happen if I sell my, if I passed away and I sold my house, my family sold my house. I said, what if you went to sell your house right now to me? What would you ask? Or what would I ask if I wanted to buy it? And then they go, well, you'd want it. That's exactly what's going to have to have answered whether I'm, I die or whether I'm alive. I always say it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I go to sell my house I always say, what if my, what if you were my neighbor and you said, I want to buy your, my, your mom and dad passed away. We love that house. We'd like to buy it. What would you ask my children? And they laugh. They go, see, that's the same thing that's going to have to be answered no matter what. So that's the same thing. And when you start, it's a, everybody goes into planning, right? Everybody wants, that's why nobody does it. it. It's, if you ever ask anybody how to diet, they tell you a 13 page way to diet. You know, uh, my son's good friend I, is into bodybuilding. Now, and I used to bodybuild, and, and, and my son said, yeah, he's doing this uh, uh, seven-month program where you work out every day for two hours, and you eat only Ed Bob. I said, well, of course, and anyone could get in shape from that. So that's not an answer. You know, that that's not an a that answer because it, most people can't do that. Right. Maintain it. So if you took 28, 29, 30-year-old person, and I said, well, I need you to fill out this 35-page thing and do this and do that and do all that, I, I can imagine you would go, Oh, I'll get to it. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming because you start getting. A, so, if you step back briefly, it it whether you do something or don't, it's still going to happen the same way. It's going to happen. So, if a person was, especially with a child on the way, it's different. Like yesterday, when you said, "What if I was a single person with no family and wasn't married and have any kids?" Um, initial questions are, "What's going to happen to your stuff when you die?" Stuff you have stuff. And stuff. So, I got a lot of stuff. Got that's stuff. for sure. And if you ever seen George Carlin, if you like, bring up George Carlin and he does a whole skit on everybody's got stuff. stuff. And I like coming to your house because you have stuff and it's not my stuff. <laughs> and he goes on and on and on about stuff because we all have stuff. And so if you look at somebody that's 20, my, my son doesn't have much stuff. It's, you know, he's still living at home. So if he, God forbid something happened, he doesn't, but he has digital assets. So I'm just going to kind of right, go and I think it. I think that's that's um, definitely more prevalent in in, in my age yeah. uh, too. I mean, not that in, not that everyone doesn't have digital assets, but you know, I think uh, my age group definitely has more. I mean, we've got you know Robinhood, everything. I mean, everything, everything. I have is online. Honestly, yeah. all of my investments, all of my uh, taxes, everything. I mean, I don't have any. I don't. I've I just bought a filing cabinet the other day, by the way. So uh, <laughs> I'm I'm. I guess coming coming into the world that's it that's adulting that's the uh, that's the only amount of adulting I've done this year um but yeah I mean every, everything I do is online so um so but that that would be the for somebody who had you know just a single person I mean, you have stuff you have bank accounts you have so, digital assets you have so let, let's start there though so 
assuming I did nothing, like I, d- I didn't get a will, I didn't get a trust, I don't know, how, I have nothing set up. What happens to my stuff if it, I were to die? It, and and it, this, it, this is again assuming that you, I'm married and have you're kids. Married and it's have kids. Me. Well, right now, at all, how are your assets titled with you and your wife? Some are, are joint, some are just me. You're just answering, you know, as you start to do that, you, you would feel a little nervousness. Like, uh, and, and I have an account of, you know, a long time ago. This has been 20, 1999. So that's been how many years? 23 years? Something like that. Something like that. 23 years ago, I had an ex partner and, and some issues happened, and I moved some bank accounts so that the attorney counseled me to move a couple bank accounts into my wife's name just to protect some things. We kept that account, one of them, one of the checking accounts. Now, I have a trust, but I kept that account separate. It's in my wife's name, and I use it. My, I do all the banking and financial. And so every check that goes through that is mine. Well, I, the banking folks are my in-laws. They, the bank, they own the bank. I go dinners with them, hang out with them and everything. And I called up one day and said, hey, what, how much is in that account? I want to make sure. I don't think I, I think I've missed a check or something. And they said we can't give it to you. It's your wife's account. I said, "Well, wait. You guys know I, I write the checks. I pay. I do all that." Mm-hmm. They said, "Dave, we can't." I had to call my wife. My wife had to call him. Now imagine you died. She died. How will I get that account? Now some states, it's simple. And in other states, it's not. And the volume of the account, the type of account, all those things. So that is you, you're, you're married, and so if you just take that before you're now you're going to have a child, how are your assets titled with each other is important because she you would hate to have you, God forbid, you pass away, and then, yeah, your life insurance. If You said my, my wife's my beneficiary. Make sure. You know, some folks went, oh, shoot, I got married, and I forgot right. I left my mom and dad. I, I, my mom and dad, I just changed that the other day, yeah. actually. Yeah. So all the titles of accounts when you're married – if that's the way you want to do that, you know, cause mm-hmm. and I'm assuming you'd want to know those. So it's kind of like if you said, how do I start? We'll take, you just take a piece of paper while you're watching TV and, and, and start writing notes like that. What do I do? What about your counts? Think of you're not there. You're still alive. How would she go to the bank? Like I did if she needed to get in that account of yours, she can't right now. Now, how would you give her permission? What tools do you need to get permission? So it doesn't have to be difficult to either put her on the account or if you say, well, we kind of want to keep our own accounts. Who could help you with that account? Maybe you wouldn't want your wife that in an account. Maybe you'd want your mom and dad or your brothers or sisters or someone. So those things seem daunting, but they're not. They're, just, they're simple. And that's where people get in trouble, especially at younger ages. They don't realize that. As, as an example, my son's accounts, we're, we're his power of attorney. He's only 21. But God forbid if he got in an accident or God, if he died, or I don't even think those paths, but how could we, we couldn't get into his accounts. We'd have to go through a legal process to do so. And, st- and so you're, you're already living in a, a bad situation happens and now it could compound off of something simple. So let me, let me stop you there. So um, you said power of attorney. Uh, That's what I said. <laughs> what, what, for anyone who doesn't know, what is a power of attorney? The power of attorney is giving a person the ability to act on your behalf. And it can, it can widely range. It can say, I'm, as an example, my, my spouse, uh, we have powers of attorney for each other. Um, I'm her, she's mine. But, and we're full blown in a sense of current everything. If she wants to go write checks out of the accounts on my behalf, she can. I can do the same. So there's no restrictions because we would do that anyway. Like if you and your wife are on the same checking account, she could write every check, right? Right. And you could do the same. So we do that so that we don't have to worry. So you want a power of attorney to give a person the ability to act on your behalf if you cannot, either by choice or by a men- mental problem, uh, mental disease, drug addiction. And is that is that just financial or is it? Health too. Health too. So there's two types a power of attorney is general. There's a general power of attorney, which covers basically everything except healthcare. And then there's a healthcare power of attorney and, and they're worded different. There's advanced directives tied into it. So for like, what would you want to do if you're on life support and things of that nature? And each state has a little nuance to each Right. Way. So, so if I were in a car crash and I fell into a coma, the power of attorney would be the person to decide whether I, yes. <laughs> whether they pull the plug You're, or if they kept with me the on. living living will portions of the power of attorney and the advanced directive things that are inside of it, would also that are tied so, to it. 
if I didn't have a power of attorney, who would that person be? It, there is not. You're over 18, so you would, they would have to appoint somebody legally. If you can't, if you don't have it and have that accident, your wife right now, and let, because see what happens real quick is, let's say you went in, I just had knee surgery. My wife came with me, and, and they said, do you have an advanced directive or power of attorney? And I said, yes, I already gave it to them, and they looked in the file, and there it was. And my wife is there, and she's my power of attorney. My daughters are my backup. And so, but let's say I was unconscious and didn't have a power of attorney and came in. Well, I didn't give permission. I couldn't because I was unconscious. Well, if you went and got knee surgery, you don't have power of attorney. They're going to ask you. You won't realize that. They'll say, who can, you're going to give them a temporary power of attorney. You're going to give them the right. You say, who would, who can I discuss this with? Who can I blah, blah, blah. You're going to give rights to do so because HIPAA rules and things Mm -hmm. of that nature. But if you didn't, then your wife would have a huge obstacle. So I I would have assumed that since we're married, she was kind of by default my power of attorney already, or at least she would have some sort of say over any of that. So she's not, is that what you're saying? She's not completely. So she would not be able to make the decision on my behalf. They don't know. (laughs) They don't know if you're estranged, if you two are separated and you don't want her knowing. Right. Or you're not to have talked to her in five years, but you're still married on paper. Mm-hmm. So if she showed up and said, I'm married, I'm his wife. And they go, oh, my God, he's got and this. she's and like, this pull the plug. Pull the plug. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, that's example. Yeah, and, geez, you know, yeah. Wait a minute. I don't want her making that decision. Mm. It, or, or accelerate estate planning. And yeah. you were in my workshop. I said accelerate and think estate planning wise. Uh, so you guys are 28, 29, 30 years old. But let's get the 72 and you both have illnesses and your wife's having an illness. And it, even if she could, you may not want her to have that ability because mm-hmm. she may not mentally be in the position because of age or illness. Right. So you want something structured, simple that gives power, but also fulfills your wishes, logical wishes. Right. So it's so, not, and it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Yeah. I probably shouldn't have the beneficiary of my life insurance to have that power of pulling the plug anyway. Right. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, well, the uh, rules are there. They just don't, it, you know, that they a little bias of, in there. You know, I always used to tease and say, every time I got a cold, my wife unplugs everything in the <laughs> house. I'm like, no, that's not what they mean by pull the plug. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, that, that gets into more of, um, like, let, let's go from there. So if, you know, say God forbid, you know, I got in a car crash. I didn't go into a coma. I actually, I, I died. Um, all my stuff and all the things, I, we already determined where that would go. What if, I, I, all right, so let me let me back up, actually. Sure. So my interpretation of a will is what you see on TV. It's always some rich guy uh, who's died, and the family all gets together, and they're like, ooh, am I in the will? And everyone's sitting around. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's probably, it's mine, and that's probably a lot of people my age, or, or really everyone's yeah. um, interpretation of what a will is. Like, okay, well, what, who's in the will? Who, who got what? And um, that's really all I know about wills. Yeah. <laughs> so I, what, what else should I know? And, and I guess we can start at the yeah, basics yeah, of yeah. what a will is. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I was heading for you, because I was saying, you know, start, you know, your first thought is is to have a general idea. You don't have to have a long idea to mm-hmm. know what you want because a will is really just saying what do you want to do. What happens if you die tomorrow? When you you could say, my wife gets it all and takes care of my child, mm-hmm. and so written that way makes sense. But you know, as life progresses, things can change, and and so so a will with you if you die without a will, accounts that are not in your wife's name, it's potential that she would go through a process called probate court, meaning. They would have to clear title of that and give it to her. If if that's they would they'd have to prove that because mm-hmm. they have a will. Whether you have a will or one, and we talked about this yesterday. Whether you have a will or not, you have a will. And the rules of intestate succession, meaning um, they have a set of rules that if you die without a will, it's structured like spouse died with chi- you know spouse children, parents, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts. So if you die without a will, they're going to guide that based on the rules of the state. So yeah. intestate succession is just what the default rules default of the rules state of the state. Okay. Yeah. So a will says, I want my own rules and that's all. It, it, it doesn't have to be super elaborate. It, it, it all, but some folks is state, your state, that's why you go to the attorney. It, attorney can counsel you through things. You might say, and I hate to say this, let's say you're in your third marriage. I don't, and I'm reflecting on a friend who's in his fourth. He, he's going to restrict his will He's, he's not going to pass his assets with the will, but mm. he, but let's say he did, he would 
what he would probably, he's going to restrict it. He's going to, cause I don't have to give my wife everything. I don't have to say you just get everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's going to have a different set of rules probably. And a will can dictate that, but it can also be a will go a will, whether you have a will or not, it goes through the probate process, meaning it's got to be proved that it's the will and the heirs are the proper heirs. And then it probate does that. And then it administers the estate. Well, you're married and all your counts, your house is in the name of you and your wife and all, most of your counts are all in your, your names. Right. So yeah. you're, you, the will just says, gives you some in cases. It says, well, really I want to die. I want everything to go to my wife. And if not, it goes to my, my, Unborn child or my child. Gotcha. And so. And so, so that goes to probate. So explain probate a little bit further for me. Yeah. So probate when a couple, typically it won't because it, it already, they, they're, it's going to, because of titling and things of that nature, um, it's pretty straightforward. But probate is, be, the essence of probate is you've got a will and over, I guess over hundreds of years it started, I, there, there's history of it, but it makes sense that someone died and someone had a question. So you died and you and your wife were separated and you said, what your family goes, he didn't want her to get everything. You know, and then, well, shoot, maybe not. Mm-hmm. So now the will can be challenged. Meaning, Hey, I, I, one of the attorneys I just was working with um, said he was in court uh, for several days. And the day he, that he was going to do the seminar, he said, look, I got to be in court. We've got a handwriting analyzer coming in to look at the signatures of the will because the family doesn't believe a brother fabricated a signature. So see, as simple as that, but so the, the probate's there to make sure your estate goes to the right heirs, the w- proper will is presented and your assets go to the right heirs. And if you have debts, so let's say you had a car or something in your outside of your name, or you had a, a lot of folks have that. They, their parents had a piece of property and passed away and left you that. Mm. So you've got this piece of property and only your name's on it. And let's say there's a mortgage on it. You took a second mortgage on it because you got to get some money. And you died and it's only in your name. Well, there's a mortgage that's in your name. How would It has to be paid before somebody, because you might say, well, my wife might assume it. But what, let's say you had, before you died, you got very sick and racked up a bunch of bills and your wife couldn't assume that note. Mm-hmm. Well, meaning they go, well, your credit's not good enough or something's wrong. That's what probate's about. It has to clear that out before anyone can get that. It so, makes sense. So your will is your, you, you, or your written down wishes, and then probate is what carries that out. Yeah, carries it out for you. Okay. It says, it, because the government's there to say, look, we're going to make sure it's right. Right. And can they say, like, my will says, you know, my kid gets the house. Can the court say, no, your brother's getting the house? Um, it. it can be contested and fought so that your brother could say, he said, I got it. And here's the documentation. And so they would take, you know, possibly. whatever their arguments to court and the court would decide who was right. Yeah. Possibly. Okay. Yeah. That's where all the, in the later years, as you know, the grandpas and grandmas and moms and dad who die in later years, so much went on over the years. Mm-hmm. If they don't take care of the situation, it, it, a lot of things are like that. Oh, well, mom said, I get the China cabinet that grandma gave her when she came over from Europe. Right. And the kid brothers are like, no, she did not. And then, that's where those issues gotcha. come in. But, you, gotcha. you, but at an age of 20, a uh, younger age, it's more straightforward. It's right. More, yeah. So what makes a will, like, how do I get a will? Do I have to go to an attorney or can I just write it on a napkin? Uh, you can write it on a napkin. It, and uh, that's legally binding? It's legal. You know, some states you would have to write it on a napkin, sign it in front of a witness, and, and maybe that's enough. And in some states you have to sign it in front of a witness and then have that notarization on it. Some you don't. You just yeah. you just do it, and that's binding as long as there's no argument to it. So, so that could be step one. If you want to do nothing else, write, write what it, you want down on a napkin. And on a napkin and say, hey, it's in or on a yellow piece of paper. But a will, you can get a will online. Uh, there's some very good services online. So it, I would not want to diffuse somebody of doing that because mm-hmm. instead of put it off, get it done. It's easy. Right. You can go buy one at, at a quick copy places they they sell them and things can you can you get that done and and you know just obviously you have to keep this updated through the years um you know through relationships and new kids or anything like that um if you were to get like if i were to get something online in place now and then maybe in like five years i'll get like a i'll upgrade you know i'll get like a little bit more going on in there that's something i can do Yeah, exactly okay but I, i would always recommend attorney 
Yeah. To, it, it won't cost that much. It's worth the investment to sit with somebody who knows what they're doing and to plan for the, to, cause they can look through it on the, just like insurance, you know, you, you look through it based on what you don't know. An attorney's done, they've been down that road and they'll say, well, here, here's simple. This is easy. Documentation always has this. They ask the questions, the right ones, even though you could probably still accomplish that. Do you want to go to bed at night? It's all about peace of mind. Yeah. If you thought you were going to bed in a hotel room and I said something about the iron and you went, Oh my God, I left my iron on. What happens? You start thinking, I left my iron on my garage door open. You start thinking about it and it bothers you. Well, I always tell people, let's just put it to bed, go to the attorney, pay 150, 200 bucks, 300. See, and you have the right person to walk you through it, but you don't have to, don't let that stop you. It, 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 I, but I would, I think everyone should get, they'll tell you, everyone should get a will. Everybody should get it. So that leads me to my next question is how much is this going to cost me? And will a wills can be online free. Then they're just free. As, free. free is good. I like that. free. Typically a will might cost uh, for one person, $150, $300 for the will. And, t- and, and sometimes that could include powers of attorney in it at the same time. You know, so it depends on the attorney and how they bundle their packages. Right. I almost and, forgot about that. <laughs> and most attorneys do flat fee. So if you went to attorney and said, would you do my will? And he said, do you want me to do flat fee? Yeah, I got a flat fee for 400 bucks. You want me to do hourly? What do you charge per hour? Mm. You know, and so they're typically they'll say, yeah, I do wills for $300. Something like that. I got gotcha. you. It'd be 150 to 300. And w- w- who would I, what kind of attorney am I yeah. looking for? So any attorney can do a will. Any attorney. Any attorney. That's nice. Basically, but. You'd want an estate planning attorney, somebody who works with that. If you were to get into a little more depth, yeah, right? You can get any attorney to do it if it's quick. To, like you said, hey, if you had a family family attorney, you'd say, you'd say, well, look, I do other, I do litigation and divorce law and that, but they know how. A will's a, a simple will. But a, one, an attorney that's sharp enough would go, hey, I've got a buddy who's a estate planning attorney. Why don't I let him talk to you? Because, again, it goes, well, if you're going to do it, you're going to this effort. Yeah. Or it's either get online, just do it, print it out, and you got one, go get it notarized and witness, and your wife at least are underneath an umbrella of something better than nothing. Yeah. Then go to the attorney and say, I did it online. And he might say, perfect, work looks great. But he might say, well, why don't we do this, and I'll charge you another 150 200 whatever. Right. Oh, that's good. Uh, so that's that's a good start, I think. Um what I guess beyond a will, what else should I be thinking of, or what else should I be aware of? Is powers of attorney. Power of attorney. Besides that, is there anything yeah. else that like that my children might yeah. need? It, it the thing the question would become, especially when it comes to children. You know, the game changes, and uh, I know uh, anybody has children. I I told my youngest daughter this, I, and my older daughter rather. I said, uh, "You never believe it to that." I was this wild. My wife and I party running around and everybody kept saying, wait till you have a kid, wait till you have a kid. And I said, oh, and then and the day I had my daughter, I was like, my whole life changed. Everything changed. I wanted it to change. And you won't know that. My brother's daughter was born a month before mine. And my older brother's just wild. He runs marathons. He's just rugged. He, he said, David, he came up with tears. And I said, you'll never be the same again. And I said, nah, 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 never be the same again. So automatically for me, and, and, and my assumption getting to know you will be the same that you go, this person takes precedence over ev- your mind over everything you think yeah. about. So how would you want her taken care of him or her? And what would you want to have happen if your wife's not there? What if your wife remarries? What if you're, you know, go down the list? What would you want? You want your daughter taken care of. How do you do that? You're, you said you have life insurance. How's the life insurance set up? You know that you can't leave that to her because she's too young. She can't even accept the life insurance until she's 18. Unless you come up with someone as a power of attorney or somebody or a trust. Now, there are trusts that you can put in your will that are called testamentary trust, meaning you die, the assets go through probate per se, and once they're done, so like you would die, they would get dumped into a trust for your daughter. So the trust may not be there at the beginning. It's there once you're gone. So that's where the attorney comes in to say, well, but so you're going to have to take care of your daughter. Who gets your daughter? And we talked about this mm-hmm. yesterday, our son. Is it a daughter? Did I say daughter? You didn't tell me that. I'm, I'm having a son. You're having yeah, a son. Yeah. 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 I was thinking daughter because my daughter, but who gets <laughs> your son? Does, 
do you, if you have parents, do they get it? Mm-hmm. If you don't have parents, do your brothers, sisters step in? Does your wife's brother, sisters, parents, if something would happen? So that is, we could say, oh, don't, don't fret over that. And I would say, no, you should fret. It, it, seriously, it is something to take serious now. It's like, no longer is it just a house or a car and somebody gets stuck with your stuff. It means it, it could be a massive change. You know that. Life, yeah. insur- life insurance is there for that reason. And uh, you wouldn't be asking the questions if you weren't thinking about the question. Yeah. So, yeah. And, so, and it's it, it's not for a lack of not caring. It's no. just for a lack of, I mean, maybe maybe it's just this, just not knowing what questions to ask. And and you know the statistics. It, it, I'm, I, we work with folks 70, probably 65 to 75 have every reason everything done. And, and you saw the stats in the seminar that my personal phone calls and since 2020 and interviews there, so that's 1200 some odd people and 90 some percent of them either have an old will 60 of the 60% of those have nothing, no will, no powers of attorney, nothing. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> now, so at a younger age, you're expect and that's just how it is. It's yeah. just the way it is. Well, now you're hearing these things either engage an attorney and say, Hey, and tell them, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I am young. I don't, or you, you can get these services done online. How much do you trust it? So do it. If it seems very easy for you, you go, wow, that was easy. They're legal documents, but you better than nothing, better than nothing. Now they're done, but have them notarized. And I did with my own daughter. I said, Mm -hmm. go online. I sent her a link. I said, I want you to do this. She did it. She was done. I mean, while we were talking within 10, 15 (laughs) minutes, Will's, Powers of attorney, everything. I said, now go get them with witness. Uh, let's get witnesses and a notary over there. So we did. They, we got a buddy of mine did it, and so she's she's got the basics. Now they've got to start to have a little more detail. They're going to have a child. They're they're looking to make, have a child and all that stuff. So that's fantastic. Well, I have I I think I have so many more questions, yeah. but I I want to keep this uh, I want to keep this as short as possible. Um, I I want to learn a lot more about uh, trusts uh, and and. and you know, how, yeah. how deep this rabbit hole can go. Um, it for, we, we ended up this, this whole week, we've been shooting a course on, uh, what you need to know about estate planning. Um, just uh, what you need to know about what you don't know. And, um, all of that is going to be on alliancegrouplive.com. Uh, and, and as well as, uh, your website, uh, willawareness.com. So, uh, if you have any more questions or any follow-ups, uh, after you've listened to this, please visit alliancegrouplife.com or willawareness.com. Um, and uh, you can sign up for one of David's seminars or his workshops that he does like, all over the uh, all over the country in various cities. So, um, David, I just want to thank you for your oh, time. You. I, I, uh, I've I learned a lot, and I've also learned that I don't – that I need to learn more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've learned too. I don't talk to very many folks – very few in 20, so it made me really think hard about what, right. how to answer those questions. Okay, so, thank you. No, thank you.